Quite often early on in a project's development, you're asked whether it's better to have a precast design or in situ design. So what is the difference between precast and in situ? When should you choose one or the other? And of course, answering that age old debate is one really better than the other. So let's get into it. So let's start off with the traditional method. Now this is in situ concrete. As the name suggests, it's concrete that is poured in situation. So it's poured on site. So typically concrete trucks come to site where they pump it out into preformed molds on the shapes that you need. So there's a lot of form work that you need to set up as you need to make sure you're forming up the shapes that you need in the concrete. You're laying down the reinforcement or post-tensioning in post-tension slabs before you're actually pouring the concrete. Some of the greatest benefits of an in-situ design is the fact that it's completely customizable. So you can have as many steps and folds that you need. You can have any size or shape. It's able to form any columns, walls or floors the building may require. Some of the downsides of an in-situ design, the setup time, so putting the form boards up, putting down the reinforcement, potentially increasing the construction time and the curing time as well. As it's poured in situation, you need to allow for at least five to seven days for extending the structure up. And the, that side time can have lots of delays if you've got a lot of bad weather. If you're enjoying this content, don't forget to concrete that like button. Not only does it help me out, but it also gets it out to more engineers. Now let's keep learning about the benefits of using precast or in situ concrete. So how about precast? Again, well, it's kind of in the name. It's precast, so it's precast before it's come to site. One of the biggest benefits of a precast design is the fact that you can prefabricate them before they come to site. So you're only limited by the number of crane lifts and installation time that you have to install the precast panels. Another benefit you may not have thought about, the reduction in embodied carbon. If you can prefabricate the elements before they come to site and store them for a longer period of time, it means that you're able to reduce the cement ratio in the mix while still achieving the same strength. So you can see by reducing the cement ratio, which has the biggest impact to the embodied carbon in the building, you can have an even more significant reduction than you would for the in-situ design. There's also a big saving by the amount of labor you need. As it is fabricated in a factory, they're more set up to put something together like this. So it means that it needs less labor to put together the same level of build. So what are some of the drawbacks of using a precast design? Well, you need to fabricate those individual elements. So they need to be transported from a factory. And also when it gets to site, they need to be lifted up and put into place. So typically in a precast building, you'll need heavier crane lifts. So it'll be highly reliant on what site access you have. So you're able to get the trucks in there to better lift the precast elements off. And also with cranes, what is their sweep radius? As the further you are out on the extension of especially those tower cranes, the less load they're able to pick up. As you're limited with size because you have to transport them to site, it means that a precast building has a lot of joints. So this means as an engineer, you need to detail all those joints effectively to put the building together. Now, these precast joints can also create weak elements inside the building. As you've got the strong precast element essentially bonded together either on a bearing pad or stitch plates, or a wet stitch situation. So precast is all about the detailing. So similar to a steel building, as you're joining it together and you've got all these connections, a lot of your time should be spent in detailing the connections of a precast building. So I'll give you some tips on detailing a precast building that will help you put them together and overcome some of the disadvantages of having this many joints in a building. So you can either design the building to not join those precast elements so they're moving independently. However, it does weaken and soften the structure. That may mean that you need bigger wall elements to resist the same load. What I would recommend, especially if you've got a big tall building, is either wet stitching the corners. So it means that you've got some in-situ concrete in the corners to join them together. So if possible, you can also do it together more like a brick element if you don't care about the external joints. So what this allows you to do is it put one panel down, one panel next to each other. Then you put the other one overlapping over that joint, similar to a brick. So it means that you've got your shear plane up the building is moving across from each other. So it means you do not need to transfer as much shear through each of those joints as you're going up. And so through effective detailing of lapping these joints, you overcome one of the weaknesses that precast may have. So when should you use either precast or in situ? And this is really looking at the benefits and the negatives of using either. So an in situ design has that full customizable nature of it. So it can be any size of project. However, it's suited for those smaller projects where you're not getting those repetitious natures of additional precast elements, which is really where all the savings comes in. 
For things like transfer slabs, transfer slabs typically need a lot of reinforcement in specific locations as loads vary across a transfer slab. So it has a high variation in the reinforcement it needs to be efficient. So this leads you more towards that in situ design as opposed to the precast that would need a high variation on many different precast planks. Another area where in situ shines over precast is areas where you have limited site access or limited craneage access. As a limited craneage access would mean, typically you may need a lot of varying different panels that are smaller in size, thus further reducing the efficiency of precast. Where the in situ concrete doesn't have that limitation on that craneage or side access. But precast is only really good for anything where you've got a lot of repetitions. As if you've got panels that are changing all the time, similar to a factory, it makes it more costly to put a precast building together. Well, any building that's got long repetitious walls, something that you can do over and over and over again. So it really shines on elements such as walls or columns. Where the benefits of the precast flooring comes in, it reduces the amount of formwork you need as it's already stable as soon as it goes up there. Or if you need bigger spans, such as you can't prop down on the structure below for whatever reason, as you can have big precast fabricated elements that are able to span long distances, which formwork would not be able to achieve. Typically, precast is the cheaper option for most bigger projects as you're able to prefabricate it, reduce the amount of time on site, also reducing the labor that you need on site, which also has another cost benefit and not having the limitations of the impact of weather, whether the building is going ahead or not. And as precast comes together as lots of individual members, some designs may need lots of different connections to put the building together. And the more connections you have, the more likely it is that an institute design will be cheaper. So it's really that age old debate of not one size fits all as different elements shine in different locations. I'd just like to take this time to give a quick shout out to my newest Patreon, Theena Studio. Without his and the other Patreon support, these type of episodes may not be possible. And as always, if you have any questions, don't forget to ask them in the below description and don't forget to subscribe and ding that bell. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.